Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the positives and the negatives of my new kayak. This is the Old Town Sportsman Autopilot 136. I just filmed a walkthrough video showing how I've got it rigged up and modified for catfishing out here on the Tennessee River. So if you're interested in that, check out that video. But this video here is gonna be just me going over what I really like about it and what I really don't like about it. I've had this kayak several weeks now, gotten a lot of seat time in it, so I feel like I can give you an informed opinion about what's really good about it and what's really not so good about it. Now, before I get started, I'm just gonna reiterate again. I talked about this in the very first video I made on this kayak, but I'll say it again here now. Old Town sent me this kayak. I did not pay out of pocket for it. Now, that first video I mentioned that, I kinda got lit up by a few people down in the comments, people saying things like, I'm a sellout, I'm just one big commercial now, I can't be trusted, a few other vulgar things I won't repeat on this video, blah, 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 blah. And look, hey, I get it, right? I mean, a lot of you tune in to me for unbiased, unfiltered information, and it's hard to trust that what you're getting is accurate when a person doesn't have skin in the game, when they haven't paid out of pocket for something. So I totally understand where those people are coming from but at the same time y'all need to understand too that i don't care you know if you don't feel like you can trust what i'm saying is accurate that's your problem not mine i had the opportunity to get the kayak i wanted with no strings attached and i jumped at the chance so you know you may not like it but at the end of the day this is my channel it's my business and i'm gonna do what's best for me and i ain't apologizing to anybody for that so I understand some people may not like that, and this video and these, my channel here may not be for you. But if you want to hear what I got to say about this kayak, stick around, and we'll go over the positives and the negatives. I actually got a handy-dandy list here so I don't miss anything. So first, let's talk about the positives. Obviously, the motor is number one. This is a Minn Kota motor with iPilot. It's got all those GPS features that you've been seeing in my videos, spot lock, course heading, ability to record routes, all that stuff. They all work amazingly well. I have been satisfied with every single feature that this motor has. In addition to that, the design of the motor in relation to the kayak, there was a lot of thought that went into this process. You know, I'm somebody, I tried out a couple years ago, if you've been with my channel, a long period of time. I had another kayak with a traditional bow mount on the front of it, and it was a disaster. The traditional bow mounts are heavy. They're like 35, 40 pounds, and they are mounted up here on the front of the kayak, which puts all of that weight right there. Old Town changed the uh, mount of this motor, which really reduced the weight. So the total weight of this motor here is 24 pounds. So they were able to shave off the weight, and in addition to that, it's recessed further back so that you don't have all that weight on the very tip of the bow. The kayak design itself keeps the bow riding higher in the water. So when you get out on those rough water days where you're getting some big waves, this kayak kind of rides on top of those waves versus a traditional heavy bow mount. When you come up over the top of one wave, all that weight's going to push you down and through the next wave and you're going to get just water coming over the top of the hole there you don't have that with this setup and i've had it out on some rougher weather days i'm staying dry i'm not getting water over the bow so i really like that in addition you know you go with this setup everything's done for you at the factory all your wiring's already done internally it's just plug and play your pulley system for raising and lowering the motor inside the hole already done for you, you don't have to jimmy rig anything Prop access is another big deal. On a traditional bow mount, your prop is gonna be out here, out front of you. So if you get weeds, debris, anything like that, you've either gotta to go to shore or climb up here to the front. With this, you can access your prop right here from the seat. So a lot of little features like that that a lot of people may take for granted if you haven't tried to put a traditional bow mount on a kayak, but Again, as somebody who has went that route and realized what a disaster it was, I really appreciate all of these features. Uh, the motor itself, again, it has been phenomenal. Now, as great as it is though, it is not without fault. There are a couple things about this motor that I don't like, and the big one is the sound. Now, operating this motor, as far as the, just turning the prop, it's pretty quiet. You know, it's even at, on level 10 full speed, which will get you about 4.2 miles an hour, 
on uh, calm days, you know, perfect conditions, it's quiet to operate. But when you are in a GPS function, spot lock or recorded route, any GPS function, doesn't matter, every little movement that it makes as far as the steering goes, it makes an electronic beeping sound like a dee 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 dee. It's like a Morse code almost. Afternoon hours, a lot of pleasure boat traffic, waves crashing, you won't notice that beeping. Early morning hours, late at night, when you're on the water by yourself, that beeping will drive you nuts. It's like nails on a chalkboard. So I'm hoping in future models they will do away with that beeping sound because that is my biggest complaint of this motor setup. The other big complaint I will say about the motor is the speed. Again, I mentioned 4.2 is about the top speed of this kayak. That's comparable to a pedal kayak. You know, my Hobies, my casual pedaling pace, about three and a half miles an hour. I can certainly kick it up to four and a half if there's bad weather coming or I got to cross a busy channel, but I can't maintain those speeds very long. Three and a half is just a normal casual pedaling pace that I can maintain for long periods of time. So it's comparable to those pedal kayaks. But when you compare it to something like a Torquedo, you know, I can get 5.2 miles an hour on my Hobie with the Torquedo. So I'm hoping again in future models of this that Minn Kota will make a motor where you not only get the GPS functions that are awesome in this thing, but also get a little bit more speed. So that's about it as far as the pros and the cons of the motor, but again overall I love the motor. Now the kayak itself, there is a lot of positives to the kayak. First off, the build of it. I've installed a lot of accessories on this kayak where I've had to drill into the hull. It is very thick plastic. It is very well made, good quality on the hull. So not gonna have any issues uh, as far as long-term use of the kayak itself. Um, I will say one more thing about the motor. And I've mentioned this in my videos uh, that I've been using this kayak. The first motor that came with this tore up. It malfunctioned on my first trip. The GPS went out in it. Now Old Town's customer service was phenomenal. They had a brand new motor shipped to my door within two weeks and I have had no issues out of the new motor. But it's definitely a concern going forward as far as the durability and longevity of these motors. Was the first motor I had just a rare anomaly or will it continue to be a problem going forward? I can't answer that for you. I don't know. Only time will tell. But as far as the kayak itself goes, the quality of it, I don't believe you will have any issues with it. Now, uh, another big perk to this kayak, I mentioned it in my walkthrough video, is the just ton of floor space. If you're somebody that fishes for large fish like I do, you got to land them, you got to put them somewhere. Having that open floor plan is very helpful with that. The seat I also talked about in my walkthrough video. I didn't really like the seat so much when I first got it, but I modified it by adding these seat risers, raising the front and the back. And just raising the seat a little higher and changing the angle because from factory, it's kind of at a reclined angle and getting it up where my hips are more in line with my knees, it made all the difference in the world. This is the most comfortable setup I have ever been in with that simple modification. And if somebody like me, you know, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have give a crap about the seat, but nowadays I'm getting a little older, getting a few more miles on the tires. Comfort's a lot bigger deal to me now than it used to be. And so again, this setup is, is the most comfortable setup I've ever been in. And raising the seat up in most kayaks will throw off the balance, make it a little bit more tippy. This kayak, because it's so stable, which is another big perk of this kayak, it's the most stable kayak I've ever been in, even raising the seat, it doesn't throw off the balance. So that's definitely another big perk of it. Another awesome feature of this kayak that a lot of you who watch my channel, a lot of these are cat fishermen, something you all will really appreciate is the rear tank well space. You can just fit a ton of gear back here. I've got a size 35 Yeti and a 10 gallon live bait tank that I've made. Plus I store my paddle and I have room here for other gear that I can shove back here in this spot and this spot as well. So just a ton of storage space in this back tank well for pretty much anything you would want. If you're a cat fisherman, you're needing a big cooler bait tank. If you're somebody who likes to do some camping and you haul a lot of camping gear with you, food, stuff like that, tons of space in this kayak for anything that you would need to haul. So now I'll go over some of the negatives of this kayak and there are a few. Biggest one being the gear tracks. Now I replaced the plastic factory gear tracks 
with a metal version from Yak Attack. These are a lot heavier duty. I installed a backing plate up under the hull. So those are a lot better than these. Now, these gear tracks here, don't get me wrong, for light duty applications, which they're designed for, they will work well. Things like mounting a fish finder, cup holders, camera mounts, stuff like that, you'll be fine with these. But for our needs as a cat fisherman, and this is a cat fishing channel, you're gonna to wanna to put rod holders and you're probably gonna to wanna to fish like I do, right? I mean, if you're watching my channel, you're probably interested in the same thing. So I fish with down lines oftentimes. You try using these, you are in for a bad day because your rod holders are probably gonna get ripped completely off. These things are very flexible. They're very flimsy. You can see I can just move them here with my hand. And as far as securing them to the kayak, it's not done very well. You've got two brass inserts here that a couple of those screws are put into. The other six screws that hold this in place is just screwed directly into the plastic of the hull. And what I found was when I went to take them off, some of those screws had been over tightened at the factory. They were just stripped. They were just kind of spinning down in there. So they were barely holding this thing on to begin with. So I'm telling you, if you don't replace these and you try fishing like I do for large catfish, you're going to be in for a bad time. You're going to have, you're going to be one of the horror stories that people have sent me throughout the years of doing this YouTube where they've just had rods, rod holders, entire gear tracks ripped off the kayak. So hopefully in future versions of this kayak, they will do better quality gear tracks for us. Now, in addition to the gear tracks, I'll kind of touch on uh, the next big drawback of this kayak, which is lack of in-hole access. You have two spots. You have one here, a hatch in the front, and you have a hatch under the seat that allows you to get inside the hole. That will not help you when you are installing new gear tracks. You can't reach your arm from any direction up to that spot. So in order to get those backing plates that we need into place, you kind of have to snake them in there. You got to drill your holes out, drop some fishing line through there, and then pull that backing plate into place. That process in itself, not a big deal. It's not very difficult to do. But on this kayak, it is. Because running down this side of the kayak, you have your wires from the trolling motor and the kill switch. On this side of the kayak, you have your pulley system. So there are obstacles in the way that prevent that backing plate from going into place. And I'll tell you, it's a frustrating ordeal. I said a lot of cuss words during that process and I did not get either backing plate into place on the first attempt on, on either side of it. So allow for some extra time if you take on that project, which again, I highly encourage you to do if you are gonna fish like I do for large catfish. Another thing I will say is a big drawback to this kayak is the transducer mounting location. Again, I touched on this in my walkthrough video, but the transducer area, you won't be able to see it because my kayak's on a trailer, but there's a recessed area here up under the hull. That's fine if you only fish on the water, but if you're somebody that uses your kayak to access bank locations or you pull your kayak up onto the shore regularly, it's, you could potentially set your transducer down right on top of a rock and put the full weight of your kayak down onto it, which could cause it to be damaged. So that setup just wasn't gonna work for me. So I ended up going with a transducer arm mount over the side here. So, you know, again, depending on how you fish, it may or may not apply to you. But for me as a cat fisherman who accesses bank spots, it was definitely a negative for me. The last big complaint I have about this kayak, and this is something, it'll seem petty and insignificant to a lot of you, but to me, it's a big pet peeve. And that is the cup holders. You got two molded in cup holders here on each side. Both of them have about two and a half, three inches of depth where there's no drainage. So if it's uh, you're out there in the rain, if you're throwing a cast net, if you're pulling big fish over the side of the kayak, those cup holders are gonna fill up with water and that water's just gonna sit there and stagnate with no way to drain. So you got your water bottle, you go to take a swig, it's been sitting in it, you drip it all over yourself. You know, I know it's a petty, thing it's not a big deal but to me it's just one of those pet peeves but as far as my complaints about this kayak that's pretty much it y'all i mean overall it has been a awesome platform to fish off of once i got it all rigged out how i wanted to the rigging process again kind of an ordeal but once i got everything set up this platform has just been amazing i know there's a distrust uh, by some of you but again not my problem I'm digging this kayak and I'm gonna to continue to fish out of it until such a time that 
I find something better that suits my needs. And right now, I think this is probably the most technologically advanced kayak on the market. Yes, you can add a bow mount motor, either Minn Kota or Motor Guide to pretty much any kayak you want these days, but you're gonna have all those problems that I mentioned uh, when I was going over the motor here, whereas this kayak being built specifically around this motor, you're not gonna have those problems. So just something to think about and consider. But anyway, guys, I know I'm rambling on here at this point. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll try to answer them for you. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.